Hello and welcome to 100 Things Pittsburgh, the show where we go behind the scenes of Pittsburgh's local treasures and hidden gems. And today we are in for a treat because we are going to learn about the murals of Moxo Vanka with Anna Deering. And these are all places featured in my new book, 100 Things to Do in Pittsburgh Before You Die. So let's go on an adventure. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So for folks who are not familiar with the murals, tell us a little bit about them. The Maxovanka murals are 25 murals painted on the interior of St. Nicholas Croatian Catholic Church in Millvale. They were painted by one artist, an immigrant, Maxovanka, he's Croatian, and he painted them in the church in 1937 and 1941. Now, so for folks who have not been here, mm -hmm. I can guarantee people have probably driven past, uh, yes. uh, you know, on 28. It's this um, yellow brick church kind of tucked up on the hill. It's sort of nondescript, but right. you wouldn't know what amazing artwork was inside. But I hope that people will take the opportunity to get inside and check it out. Absolutely. It, it, they are non-traditional. They are not your traditional church murals. Mm -hmm. uh, they really are and were meant to be sort of to tell the story of the congregation, but also to really tell Pittsburgh's story mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, so very much um, a surprise and yeah. something someone, everyone should find. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So tell us about how did this whole thing get started? Why are there these murals here in Millville? So uh, right before the turn of the century, the in 1900s, there were probably somewhere between 30 and 50,000 Croatians living in Pittsburgh. And in 1894, the first Croatian Catholic Church was, parish was founded here in Pittsburgh. And by 1898, they had outgrown the space and decided to build two churches. Mm -hmm. So the uh, St. Nicholas Croatian Church Millvale was built in 1900. In 1921, the church burned mm -hmm. and uh, they rebuilt it in one year. And so of course, the what had been sort of traditional church that, you know, uh, paintings, other things uh, were gone, and it was a white interior, and they were heavily in debt. So they uh, brought Father Albert Jagar over to be the priest of the church in 1931, and his job was to reduce the debt. And by 1937, he'd done that, and he wanted to do something really spectacular with the interior of his church. Wow. Well, he certainly succeeded. He did. <laughs> he really had a vision. It wasn't, it was really, again, to celebrate the congregation, but he also had a vision that he wanted more, he wanted to sort of be speaking to a larger audience. Mm -hmm. uh, it just so happens that Max Ovanka, who was a Croatian, had emigrated to the United States in 1934 after having married an American woman. And he actually made his way to Pittsburgh in 1935. He was sort of doing a tour of the industrial parts of America with a writer, another Croatian immigrant. And he found Pittsburgh in 35 and he loved it. And he stayed here for at least 10 days mm -hmm. and walked the city and sketched the city and fell in love with the city. And it was at the end of his stay that he had a show in Oakland. And we think that that's when Father Jagar happened to mm -hmm. see his work. And by 37, when he had retired the debt and was ready to paint the church, he felt he had found his artist. Wow. And so he, reached back to Vanka through this writer, mm -hmm. Louis Adamich, and invited him to come to Pittsburgh. Wow, very yeah. full circle. It was very full circle. He came in, and, and you know the really interesting thing, I mean, I think it's a good story all around in a lot of ways, uh, but he came to Pittsburgh. He was trying to establish himself here as an artist. I think he thought it was a wonderful opportunity to make his mark. He'd never painted murals before. Mm -hmm. And he walked into a, a church, into a sanctuary that was completely white, so every inch a canvas, <laughs> <laughs> wow. but never done it before. But he took on the challenge. He said, yes, I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, adding to the story, the really interesting thing was Father Jagar said, um, so if, can you come back in April? This is when you can mm -hmm. start. Is it possible for you to have something done by June? Because I have, you know, I want, we want to rededicate sure. the church and celebrate this. Vanka agreed, 
And really, at the end of his stay in Millvale for eight weeks, he'd completed half of the murals, wow. so 12 murals. And for folks who maybe haven't seen the murals, the scale of that is truly mm -hmm. amazing because these truly are really not just walls, but you know, going over kind of arches, going over a balcony. I mean, these are really, really gigantic murals. And if I remember correctly from my tour, um, I think there were some unique characteristics about how he painted them, whether it was the paints themselves or sort of his process. Can you tell us about, about that? Sure. Well, again, he was on a short time frame, mm -hmm. and you're right. They were anywhere between two and three story murals. There are all um, some, and they're, they, he even used under the choir loft, so mm -hmm. the, the ceiling murals on, uh, above you and under mm -hmm. the choir loft. He painted from about 9 a.m. to 3 a.m., uh, oh six days a week, because he was on a schedule. And uh, the really thing, I think the thing that's really remarkable to people is the plaster was long dry by the time he painted, but he still used a water-based paint. Mm. So these murals can be washed off the walls. Uh, but he, you know, they, I think, looked around for a solution that would work, and they ended up on this kind of commercial uh, casein-based mm. paint. And uh, he really, for instance, the altar mural, the main mm -hmm. altar mural, Mary Queen of Croats, um, that mural is three stories high, and he painted it in thirds. Yeah, because if you can imagine the scaffolding challenge in 1937, <laughs> he was painting by himself. They were constructing wood scaffolding. Mm -hmm. uh, he couldn't do it all at one time. Sure. So that's, uh, it, it is kind of, it was a one-man show all the way through. Wow. Yeah. So with Pittsburgh's pollution over the years, mm -hmm. these murals have weathered quite a bit. Um, tell us about the conservation efforts and how that all got started. Sure, sure. So it really was um, that the, so if you think about it, they were completed in 41. The uh, church at this moment is not an air-conditioned church. So the w windows of the church are open nine mm -hmm. months out of the year. Mm -hmm. So again, as you said, a lot of Pittsburgh soot and right. industry <laughs> is on the, are on the walls. But it was around 1981 that, uh, and this was after Father Jagar had died mm -hmm. uh, in 68. Um, and so they kind of went dark for a little mm -hmm. while. Uh, there was no lighting in the church on the murals. Mm -hmm. So people really didn't see them. It was pretty dark with the dirt. In 81, they staged a play that was written by Dave Demarest mm -hmm. called Gift to America, which is actually what Vanka calls those, the paintings and they used theatrical lighting to light up the murals. And I think it just took everyone, everyone was just, wow, you know, taken uh, aback by it, uh, but in sort of newly inspired that right. these needed lighting. It was also though at that time that they could see some of the damage mm -hmm. that was um, occurring. It wasn't until 2004 uh, when Hurricane Ivan mm -hmm. came through that um, water had really permeated the, the one of the walls, the, the weather side of the church, mm -hmm. and we saw what is called efflorescence or salt rising okay. to the surface of the plaster and mm -hmm. destabilizing the plaster. So in essence, you get wat white marks mm -hmm. all over and it, it kind of flakes the plaster off and the paint. And so that was becoming noticeable. Mm -hmm. Uh, the church, the congregation immediately fixed the problem, but the um, damage had been done. And the, the murals are essentially the path of least resistance sure. on the walls within oh. the church. So in 2008, uh, one of the Pittsburgh anniversaries, they, they brought Gift to America back, mm -hmm. and they put this theatrical lighting back on the murals. And they had four sold out audiences, mm -hmm. so probably 300 people a night in the church, who were discovering the murals for the first time. I mean, these really yeah. were um, sort of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And the Society to Preserve the Murals was founded in 1991, but until that time had really had kind of this behind the scenes role, hadn't nice. really been out in the community. So, um, and they really felt that it, with the audience they had, that was a chance to sort of uh, rekindle community investment mm -hmm. in the future of the murals, raise awareness. Sure. And so the campaign to, to preserve, mm -hmm. uh, to conserve them was started. And since 2009, we've uh, completed the conservation of 12 of the 25 murals. And conservation involves anything from straight cleaning, mm -hmm. which is still a very uh, involved process, sure to um, the use of injecting nanoparticles into the surface. Wow. Uh, so there's a, a lot of science yeah. behind this, uh, art, science, everything. Absolutely. And uh, we've been, we are continuing to, to do the, we will be doing, continuing to do the conservation, you know, 
in the future yeah. ongoing, right. but uh, we do hope to be starting another round of conservation pretty soon. Fantastic. Yeah. I remember from my visit, I was so taken by there was a little um, rectangular square, you know, that was mm -hmm. um, kind of showing you what the murals looked like before conservation, and it will blow you away if when you visit. I mean, it's the murals look so fantastic and, and bright and vibrant and bold, and mm -hmm. it's hard to imagine how they could have looked so dim. Um, and then you see this little square, and you really understand how much work your team has put into conserving these, and how um, how special they are. That we we must work to conserve them. Absolutely. And uh, one thing I uh, it's it is a very obviously you have to have a lot of patience for that oh, sure. work. <laughs> it takes them um, roughly three hours to clean, just clean a square foot of the mural. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that you mentioned was that these are very unique murals for being in a church. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether um, you know, you've, you're a religious person or not, these murals are, are worth visiting for mm -hmm. sure, no matter, no matter who you are. Um, tell us how people can come out and visit them. Okay. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. These are universal and we like to say timeless yes. um, because they, as I said before, in addition to religious traditions, they speak to the immigrant experience, mm -hmm. Pittsburgh's industrial past, etc. We, um, in 2010, we launched and, and continued to maintain a, a very active docent program, a tour program. We hold public tours every Saturday at 11 and 12.30. People can make private tour arrangements with us. And then we also host a lot of events and activities through the year that people can come to. And I have to credit your docents because I've been on several tours mm -hmm. taking different friends mm -hmm. with me. And every time I have met a different docent and they've been amazing and I learned something new. So mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. Well, that's the great thing about the murals too is I've been looking at them for over 10 years mm -hmm. now and I still see something new just about every time I walk wow. in the church. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so much symbolism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, different. Can you talk about some of the symbols that are yeah. in, in his work? Well, what he really did. What, one of the things about Vanka was he was very um, interested in Croatian history. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what you'll see are a lot of the folk traditions of the Croatian uh, people. So mm -hmm. a lot of ethnic uh, sort of touches uh, mm -hmm. throughout there. We actually had a folklorist come in and, and her greatest compliment was he knew his stuff. Um, so <laughs> he, was, he was accurately <laughs> representing that. Of course the religious um, mm -hmm. symbolism is there. The other pieces that we have are just, um, especially the immigrant experience. He speaks a lot, he, he does a lot of contrasting between old world and new world, so really honoring that transition um, into the America, into the mm -hmm. industrial America. So if you look on, if you're looking at a painting, two paintings in particular, a Croatian mother raises her son for war uh, versus uh, immigrant mother raises her son for American industry, on the one side, you'll be on a countryside in Croatia with women in traditional mourning dress, um, you know, uh, over a son, a grieving mother. Then you'll have a grieving mother in the New World with the um, mills in the background mm -hmm. having witnessed a mining accident. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have, it really is, we, we always look at those main themes as being um, the immigrant experience, mm -hmm. uh, the industrial, the old world, new world piece, strong, uh, grieving, you know, women, mm -hmm. strong women in his murals. And so there's a lot, that, and I, I honestly, I, I think the greatest thing is that they are applicable to every uh, time, mm -hmm. uh, every generation, mm -hmm. because he had a lot to say about um, social justice, mm -hmm. about economic inequality, about the immigrant sacrifice mm -hmm. for America, but he also talked a lot about um, war. He was a very, he was a pacifist. He was really had some, and if you think about the time frame of the second uh, series of murals, it was 1941. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's amazing seeing the murals today because you know you might think these are made decades ago, but they still hold, as you said, they're timeless. They still mm -hmm. hold so much meaning, and. Um, I always think about you know artists who sort of outlive their their work outlives mm -hmm. the, outlives them mm -hmm. and outlives their time. I, w I wonder what he would, um, you know, if he were doing a tour today, what he would point out in the murals because being in our contemporary time, mm -hmm. seeing the murals, there's so much you can take from them nowadays. Absolutely, we keep asking ourselves if there were two empty walls in the church <laughs> right now, what would Max yeah. Ovanka put? on the walls today, and, and I think that that is the other thing that people who haven't seen them should know, is that they're, they're very provocative statements, mm -hmm. um, a very challenging images at times uh, for all types of audiences, but they really can um, speak to today's issues and what's, what's happening, so. Absolutely. Yeah. 
You mentioned some special events that you do. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about those. They're throughout the year, I know you have mm -hmm. fundraisers, you have special events on the holidays. Give us sort of an overview of those. Sure, sure. We have two fundraisers each year, two community events, um, one in the spring called Cocktails and Conservation. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just a wonderful celebration of the murals, lots going on, lots of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And we tell about um, periods of history within the murals. Mm -hmm. uh, the, actually, the story of the murals, not just their creation, but how they've been maintained mm -hmm. and, and the work we're doing. In, um, in the late, in November, typically, we do Applaud the Light, which is really just a showcase of local talent, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's um, singing or uh, sort of musical or prose, uh, mm -hmm. poetry. Uh, last uh, November we had a City of Asylum poet um, reflect on one of the murals mm -hmm. and, and write an original poem for that, so that's a celebration. We do talks, uh, we mm -hmm. have lectures that at some point may talk about the murals themselves, but in a lot of times are using the murals as a backdrop, as mm -hmm. sort of context for discussing immigrant stories or social injustice, mm -hmm. other um, uh, subjects like that. And then we've also had drawing sessions at the church. Uh, we host, uh, we're hosting a, a concert, a recital um, soon. Uh, so that's a good mm -hmm. example of people just want to play in the church. It's yeah. a wonderful <laughs> place to play, and um, we're happy to have people come in and sh showcase that work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely get out to one of those events or yes. go visit on any Saturday, right? Right, right. And there's lots of information on our website, uh, vankamurals.org. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can make advance reservations for the tours or you can just show up. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Anna, thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here today Thanks and telling us about the Vanka murals. It was a treat to learn about and the beautiful photos that you shared, I think will definitely get folks out there. So thank you I so hope much. So. And thank you for watching another episode of 100 Things Pittsburgh, the show where we go behind the scenes of Pittsburgh's local treasures and hidden gems, all featured in my new book, 100 Things to Do in Pittsburgh Before You Die. Learn more about the book at 100thingspittsburgh.com, and we'll see you next time.